Okay, we're going to have to uh, reshoot some things because of technical difficulties. So, new, new wardrobe. Uh, but we're going to start back from here. Uh, now, temperature affecting the rate of enzyme kinetics. Uh, effectively, we have a low temperature in enzymes that will give us low kinetic energy and a low rate of collision. A high temperature with enzymes will give us a high kinetic energy and a high rate of collisions. That is going to mean that our higher temperature will give us more energy and our system will allow us to increase our rate of reaction overall at higher temperatures. And a lower rate of reaction um, will mean that our, uh, uh, our decreased rate of reaction overall at lower temperatures. Now, for many of our enzyme controlled chemical reactions, the rate of reaction will double every 10 degrees Celsius. Now, this is variable between reactions, but typically this is going to be double, uh, sometimes it will be triple, sometimes it will be 1.5, but that will be the typical, uh, it is double. Now, enzymes catalyze reaction. Eventually you are going to reach a temperature where the protein will denature and your rate will drop dramatically as you lose your enzyme concentration to denaturation. Now, for uh, pH, pH is another factor that affects enzyme uh, rate of reaction. And this will have a general curve shape of increasing to an optimal pH and then decreasing past that point. Now, each enzyme has its own optimal pH. So for pepsin, which functions in our stomachs, it has an optimal pH of 2. Our hydrochloric acid in our stomach, uh, the concentration is such that we will have a pH of 2. So that is the perfect place for pepsin to exist and perform its function. So it will increase rate of reaction until its optimal pH, and then it will sharply decline until it no longer functions past that point. Now, salivary amylase functions at neutral pHs like that found in the saliva, salivary amylase. It will decrease uh, in rate of reaction as in uh, more, acidic con in more acidic conditions like the stomach. So salivary amylase is, is deactivated and denatured in the stomach acid. Um, in more basic pHs, it is also denatured and deactivated. Now, arginase has a similar curve as such, and at high pHs, it will also end that curve. Now, I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to remind you that ionic bonds in proteins are typically between the terminal amino uh, and terminal carboxylic ends. Those are the uh, NH3 positive and COO minus groups. Uh, the non-neutral charged R groups are going to be our uh, ionic bonds forming groups as well. Um, so ionic bond is due to charge. And I'm bringing that up because altering the pH, if you'll recall, pH is the uh, pH is the negative logarithm of the concentration of, hydro of hydrogen ions. That is pH. So the negative log of, of the concentration of hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are charged particles. They will change the overall charge of the surrounding medium. That change in the charge of the surrounding medium will uh, uh, denature and change the tertiary structure of the proteins. Changing the tertiary structure of a protein will uh, change the substrate binding affinity and therefore affect the rate of reaction. So that range of tolerance is what happens. So this is our rate of reaction versus enzyme concentration. Our rate of reaction versus enzyme concentration. Our rate of reaction will increase uh, as we increase the enzyme concentration so long as we have an abundance of substrate. So as long as we have an excess of substrate, um, effectively this trend is going to continue. But if we limit the substrate, if we, uh, I'm sorry, if we limit the enzyme concentration, uh, every, our rate of reaction is going to increase until we uh, fill up all of our enzyme active sites. That is going to be a direct correlation between the rate and the enzyme concentration. So when we have a fixed concentration of enzymes, we will have um, up to this point a similar curve as our enzyme concentration. This is substrate concentration versus rate of reaction. 
So as substrate concentration, oops, as substrate concentration increases along our stabilized, uh, our standardized enzyme concentration, we will re a, reach a point of saturation. That point of saturation is called the max, which stands for maximal velocity. Maximal velocity is the highest rate of reaction you can achieve. This is the point where if you increase the concentration of substrate any further, nothing is going to happen. All of the active sites of our enzyme are completely filled up. We can no longer accept more substrate onto the enzyme in order to react it and release it. So if we compare, um, the Vmax will be the same when our only variable considered is substrate concentration. Before we reach Vmax, we will see an increased rate of reaction um, with an increased substrate concentration. Once we hit Vmax, we will see no change whatsoever. So if we were to compare two substrate concentrations, uh, however, if we have uh, the same enzyme concentration, the enzyme concentration is equal in both cases. Uh, so the enzyme concentration of one is equal to the enzyme concentration of two. Oh, sorry, the enzyme concentration of one is equal to the enzyme concentration of two. And our substrate concentration of one is greater than the substrate concentration of two. And we have a uh, rate of reaction. Uh, we're going to go with the V here. Um, and this is going to be our uh, rate of reaction. Oh, this is going to be our. This is going to be time down here. And our curves are going to show uh, with our. Let's make one red and one blue. That'll make things slightly easier to distinguish. So S two. So S1 is our greater substrate concentration. With our greater substrate concentration, we will reach Vmax quickly, and then we will have a decrease. With our lower, rate, with our lower substrate concentration, we will have a slower increase and then a decrease. That's going to be our difference. Um, I should have raised this all the way to the top. So we will have a, they will both possibly reach Vmax, but the greater substrate concentration will reach Vmax faster and stay there longer and take longer to complete the reaction all over, overall. With our substrate concentration of two, our lower substrate concentration, it will take longer to get to Vmax, and it will decrease and end the reaction faster. So that's what happens when we compare different substrate concentrations with the same enzyme concentration, if both of them could reach Vmax. So let's take a math detour, another math detour. I know, another math detour. Well, at least the first of many math detours. Now, in this instance, we have our average rate of reaction. The average rate of reaction is uh, equal to the negative of the reactant concentration at the second time, at the final time, minus the initial rate of re the initial concentration of reactant at the first time. All of that divided by the difference between our final time minus our initial time. So let's shorten that for a moment. It's the negative change in our reactant concentration over our change in time, or the change in our product concentration, positive, over our change in time. That is the rate of reaction. Now, ideally, we would like to use initial rate of reaction when we're comparing different conditions. Unfortunately, the initial rate of reaction is the instantaneous rate at the start of the reaction when time equals zero, t equals zero. So the instantaneous rate of reaction will involve differential equations. That's calculus. I'm not here to teach you calculus. I'm here to teach you AS level biology, which does not include directly calculus. Uh, so I'm going to avoid calculus. I will settle for the average rate if you have to calculate yourself. But I will teach you an equation that used calculus to get there. So 
Um, Michaelis and Menton, Leonor Michaelis and Maud Menton, uh, were a German and Canadian team in 1930, uh, 1913. Uh, they uh, developed the mathematical equation that I will refer to as enzyme kinetics. I could refer to it as Michaelis Menton plots or equations or curves. Um, I've never been corrected on that, so I'm going to assume I'm right. But then again, this is the internet. I'm sure I'll be told very quickly that I'm wrong, uh, loudly. Uh, but uh, if you need to call it something, just call it enzyme kinetics, and we'll be good. <coughs> so the constants that we need to deal with are Vmax, which we've already learned about. That is going to be maximal velocity. That's going to occur at the point where all the enzyme active sites are saturated with substrate. In this way, it's going to reflect how fast a given enzyme can catalyze reactions. And Km, K sub m, is the michaelis menten constant. Graphically, it is the substrate concentration at the point on the curve that is at one half V max. So it is an x value at a y value. So it is an x y coordinate. The Km will be the mirror image, the mirror image of the affinity of the enzyme to the substrate. So the affinity of an enzyme to a substrate is the enzyme's willingness to bind to that substrate. A high affinity means that it will bind very quickly and very readily. A low affinity means that eh, it'll bind when it wants to. When it wants to, to, when it wants to bind, it'll bind. It'll happen if it happens. Let it take its course. Um, so because when I said the mirror image, I meant the inverse. So the Km, a high Km, means a low affinity. And a low Km means a high affinity. So an enzyme affinity is the inverse of the Km, and vice versa. Now, Km is not directly tied. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Km is directly tied to Vmax. But the same is not true for Vmax. Vmax is not directly tied to Km. Vmax is the maximum velocity of that enzyme. Km is the affinity of the enz is a reflection of the affinity of the enzyme. Km is a point on the graph. So this is the actual equation of uh, the uh, rate of reaction is equal to Vmax uh, times substrate concentration divided by Km plus substrate concentration. Now, if we are given any three of these values, we can find the fourth. That's just algebra. So, but if we want to come up with an equivalency, when we have the substrate concentration being massively higher than Km, such the point where Km is practically zero by comparison, we can treat Km as if it were zero. And if we treat Km as if it were zero, because the substrate concentration is very, 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 very high, then that means that it's Vmax times substrate concentration divided by substrate concentration. Substrate concentration will cancel out. And the rate, of the rate of reaction will be Vmax. So at very high substrate concentrations, the rate of reaction might as well be maximal velocity. Now, that said, if our substrate concentration is equal to Km, then that means that we can replace substrate concentration with Km. And we have Vmax times Km over Km plus Km. That is 2Km. Km will cancel out. Vmax divided by 2. Rate of reaction is 1 half Vmax when our substrate concentration is Km. That is a definitional point. So this is what the michaelis menten looks like graphically. So, the rate of reaction approaches the asymptote that is Vmax, maximal velocity. At one half of Vmax, the y value that is one half of Vmax, 
the point on the curve will lead us to where Km is. And that is how we look at this curve and how we interpret this equation. Got it.